Yeah, I just recently had someone ask me a question about how to use a, uh, a counter timer. Uh, like, like this one here, for example. How to use this counter timer to measure the velocity of an object. And uh, so here's one way to do it. Uh, so we have an object that's moving, uh, and we have a couple of sensors set up. Uh, let's space those sensors apart by a foot, for example. Uh, as this object passes by these sensors, either, each of these sensors will put out a pulse. Okay, and if you measure the time difference that it takes to go between sensor 1 and sensor 2, uh, that will give you how long it takes to travel one foot. So we can use uh, a counter to measure that time interval. And then also this counter that we'll show is, uh, has got some math in it that allows you to mathematically just invert that, do 1 over delta t, which will essentially directly read out in feet per second. And of course, if you have a counter that doesn't uh, do the one over in the math, you could just do this math by yourself. So just a quick video to show how to set that up. So I've got this uh, AFG here that I'm using to generate uh, two pulses. Um, one that is, you know, starts uh, nearly, you know, essentially we'll call time zero, and the second pulse on the second channel that starts sometime later, and I've got the time later set to about 350 microseconds. So we're going to start one, you know, immediately, and then the second one 350 microseconds later. Okay. So I've got them hooked up right now to the scope. Okay. And I've got it set up to be a manual trigger, so if I just push the trigger button on the scope, on the uh, signal generator, you can see these two pulses pop up here. And let's see, we're looking at uh, 100 microseconds of division, so that should be about three and a half divisions, and that's what it is. So I've got the two pulses kind of set up here that we want to go look at. So what we'll do is we'll take those and bring them up into the counter on channel A and take the other one into channel B. Okay, And then we just need to set up the counter here, uh, appropriate uh, for the measurement. So I'll hit measure, okay, and I'll pick, uh, I want to make a time measurement, okay, a time interval measurement A to B. So I'm already set up to make that measurement now. I just want to also make sure that these channels are set up right. The uh, pulses I created are, they start at zero and they go to one volt. So input channel one, I want to make sure it's set for a rising edge. Uh, DC coupled 50 ohms, okay, no attenuation. Manual trigger, but I want to set the trigger level to say 500 millivolts. Okay, so I'll save that one. Now we'll go to input B and do the same thing. Okay. So the trigger level on the B is also set there. So let's just kind of go back and forth to be sure. Channel 1, A and B, they're both set to 50 ohms, 500 millivolt trigger. So now with that set up like that, uh, I can go down here and I can hit the manual trigger button on the generator. And when I do that, I'll see the time measurement come up there. So there's the 350 microsecond time. So most counter timers give you the ability of at least doing that. And you could just take that 350 microsecond measurement, for example, invert that to give you know, feet per second, for example, if these sensors were spaced a foot apart. Now this uh, counter does have uh, some math capability, so if I hit the math button, I can go to math, and let's turn math on. And I've got a number of different equations here, okay? And uh, some of these, like, K, these letters like K and L and M, these are uh, factors that you can enter in. So you can see a couple of different equations and we can enter in a value for K, a value for L, a value for M for these various equations. Uh, or you, and, and then X is the, the measured value. So this is the function that we want, um, which will be, we'll set K over X plus L, we'll set L equal to zero and K equal to one, and that'll just be one over this measurement. So if I select that measurement, okay, we can see that K is set to zero or to one, L is set to zero, M doesn't really matter, it's not in this equation. Okay, there's our equation. So now if I reach down here and I hit the trigger button on my function generator, now we can see we're calculating out uh, one over that time delay, one over 350 microseconds or so, it's not exactly 350 microseconds, uh, we can see 2.857 kilohertz, or uh, in this case would be 2,857 feet per second, if these two sensors were indeed you know, set a foot apart. So that's how you set up uh, the, a frequency counter to do a velocity measurement if you have two sensors that are spaced a fixed distance apart uh, and you wanted to calculate velocity. Uh, by using math you could set some of these other parameters up such that if these sensors were not spaced you know, a, a foot apart or some other distance 
you'd be able to do that calculation uh, within the math function here. So just a quick little video to show how to set that up and uh, hope you enjoyed. Thank you.